Hey. Oh, hello. We are on. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> hello, I am Tara from Living on a Dime to Grow Rich with my husband at the moment, Michael. At the moment. <laughs> I am the author of the Dining on a Dime cookbook where you can eat better, spend less with over 1,200 recipes and tips. This is our hardcover color pictures. Let me find a color picture because I keep doing the same. Ooh, there's the peanut butter right there. Even how to make homemade peanut butter. You can get this at livingonadime.com. Today, I am making, what am I making today? <laughs> I forgot to write down my title. Four chicken dinners for $20. Yeah, with one package of chicken breast. With one package of chicken breasts. It says no one's watching, so I just want to ask people. So, I am making four chicken dinners for $20 with this one package of chicken breasts. Now, this is an easy chicken meal that is not rocket science people it's not rocket science no so i'm going to show you two of the dinners and then i'm going to talk you through the other two dinners okay so first of all let me show you what i bought i bought this package here dave's going to put the first picture of the big package up do that of chicken for a dollar 99 a pound which is about my regular price when it goes on sale for $1.49 to $1.77 a pound, which happens quite regularly, I stock up and I will get 30 or 40 pounds of chicken and stock up for three to six months. That is how I buy it. Now, let me show you picture number two here. You can see that this package of chicken is 4.4 pounds, seven ounces. I paid $1.99 for it, so the total amount for this whole thing of chicken was $9.35 for four dinners. Okay, you gotta love the English language, don't you? Four, four. <laughs> <laughs> How do people even speak the English? That's what I want to know. No wonder they're confused. Okay, now, Dave, you can come back. Now, I'm going to get started, and I'm going to show you the... Parmesan, what, no, the potato chicken tenders, the potato chicken tenders, okay? Potato flake chicken tenders. Now, what it is, is I have this package of garlic potato thing that I got for free somewhere. I have no idea where I got it from. But anyway, I got it for free. So, you can buy it like this, or if you want, you can just take a box of potato flakes and sprinkle your chicken with a little seasoned salt or a little garlic powder and salt or a little garlic salt any of the above whatever you have on hand and that will um season it just about the same as if you were using the package okay now i got one of my side dishes here done so let me set it oh man dude over here okay don't back up dear all right now this here is gonna be the parmesan chicken dinner for tonight okay so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna cut these chicken breasts now you can just use chicken tenders if that's what's on sale but i'm gonna cut these into thin slices in the background here, I have oil heating to fry them. Yes, my love muffin. I'm just peeking over. Oh, um, okay. So, just like so. Do -do 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 -do. You may wonder why I'm using gloves because I have my new St. Patrick's Day nails on and I don't feel oh. like cleaning them out when I'm done doing this, so. I totally forgot it's March. It oh is March, isn't it? Goodness, what is going on with the time? I know, it's crazy, isn't it? Mm, all like right. It. Now, get it all chopped up, okay? So here's tonight's dinner. 
Then while I'm chopping, even though normally if I'm doing this, I wouldn't cook this tonight, but I would chop it up because I already have the cutting board and the knife. I'm gonna go ahead and chop it up. Now, for the honey mustard sandwiches, I'm cutting them lengthwise, or lengthwise, I don't know what direction that is. But anyway, I'm cutting the chicken breasts in half instead of in, um, instead of in little, little strips. strips, more like tenders, okay? So then, cut these in half. Now, these are huge for a sandwich, so what I would probably do is cut them in half again like that, okay? All right, so now for tonight's dinner, which is the chicken flake, you're gonna take a an egg, an egg, a egg, and one egg, <coughs> and an egg, egg, and egg, and you're gonna beat enough. it up, huh? Enough. <laughs> enough. All right, you're gonna beat it up with that. I'm gonna add my milk here, right there, and get it all going. Okay. Oh, can you hand me a container? I'm short one container. I don't have any. Yes. Okay. Then you're going to put your potato flakes in here. Now, once again, if you're using potato flakes from in the big packet, just add some garlic or onion salt in it. And if you're using garlic powder, add a little bit of salt. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is. I'm gonna add just a little bit of salt into this one because the world needs more salt, people. All right. And then, going to dip it in the milk mixture. And then, I, except I need that. It looks like the oil might be about to scorch. It's scorching. And, okay, well we just ignore smoking oil around here, you know. We've got, you paid the house insurance, right? Yeah, okay. I'm more thinking about you. Oh, oh thanks. See, you might You're want to so keep me a little sweet. longer, huh? You didn't pay what the a life sweet guy. Too, though, right? Okay, so then you just dip. You did pay the life insurance too, though, right? You did pay the life insurance too, right? Well, there's not any on you. Well, well there's not any on me, that's true. Oh, it wait. won't insure me. They don't realize I should be insured for a million dollars you're a world famous cookbook because i'm a world famous cookbook author <laughs> <laughs> okay so now i've got some started come back with me dave simply right. joyful is asking are the chicken pieces partly frozen before cutting they are aren't they? um these aren't but it is easier to cut them when they are partially frozen okay all right so here we go my oil is a little warm Can't really get <laughs> <White moves. laughs> So Brooke is wondering, was that half strips and half fillets for the whole pack of chicken? Yes. Oh, my yes, smoke Brooke. Over here. All right. So then, turning down my oil here because my oil got too hot. Heating up for the show. Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Pull down, pull down. Okay, if your oil gets too hot, just pull it back off the burner and let it cool down, and then you can do your chicken again. Now, once again, Mike's gonna put a link for my favorite cooking tool at the moment. Oh. Or for the last two Mike's years. Have to go find it. Just the Amazon store. Um, this is in our Amazon store. What's the matter? That's yes. Um, it is the cooking thermometer, digital thermometer. Zap that puppy and you can see how hot it is, okay? 
And then you can know if it's too hot. Usually it's around 350, 375 is what you want it, okay? All right, now, there. Now we're gonna let this cook just a little bit more. Oh, you changed the curtains. Huh? Curtains? Everybody's talking about the curtains. Are they new? Uh-uh. Oh. I was like, did I not notice? No. They must just notice them because it's sunny outside now. You can actually see it, but... Yep. Okay. So, we're getting those. I think that one's done. This one will be Mike's because it's a little on the crispy side. <laughs> Mike likes it crispy. Okay, throw another one in there. And then... You just cook them just like that and um, then I will show you, let me get the rest of these going and then I'll show you the two meals that I made out of these, okay? Get those all done. Alright, do we have any questions while I'm dipping the chicken? Your hair looks nice, Tara, says Pause Not Cause. Oh! Thanks. I haven't washed it for four days, so I was rather proud of myself for pulling it off. <laughs> Robin said, I thought you were done with Walmart. Did you say you had done, you'd gone to Walmart for that? This was the final trip to Walmart. <laughs> this was the Walmart trip that put me over the edge. Yeah. So. David is asking, can you reuse the oil? Yes, you can. And I do all the time. Um, and for anyone who might be worried about it, because you're cooking it so high. Well, okay. Let me rephrase that. Not with meat, I don't. With ah. meat, I don't reuse the oil. If it's breads like frying donuts or frying sopapillas or something like that, I do. Okay. I do not do it, though, for meat items. It's funny the things people notice, dear. Anna says your floral hand towel is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you like it. Okay. Getting Ooh. that done. Karen Stuff said, I saved $104 on my grocery bill by doing what Tara said, stocking up. Paid $6 each on formerly $25 plus chuck roast. Ooh, good Ooh, going. That's awesome, Karen. Need to okay. Check on the camera. Let's see. Get the last ones in here, and then we'll be done with this recipe, and I'll go on to the next one. Okay. So, I mean, pretty easy. Not really hard at all. Um, now, if you want to do this dairy-free, you can just um, use regular potato flakes and add your garlic powder. And then use rice milk, almond milk, soy milk. Coconut milk would be a little strange, I would think, but you could try it, I guess, if you want. It would make a sweet taste, wouldn't it? Yeah. Might. I don't know what coconut milk would taste like. Okay. So while that's finishing cooking, we're going to go to the next one. The next dinner is our honey mustard chicken sandwiches. What you're going to do is you're going to take your chicken and you're going to broil it, okay? And I am just not prepared today. And it smells really good. All right. Now, just so I don't cross-contaminate my poor family here. Soon as Susan is asking what kind of oil did you use? Canola. Just regular canola. Kelly uh, says, got my cookbook last week and I love it, love it, love it. Yay! Yay, I'm glad. Listen, guys, let me just say real quick. If you have a problem with an order, we answer every single order question. If you have not received a, a quite an answer from us, that means we did not receive your email. We've had several people lately get angry at us because we haven't responded. I don't know if we're having a problem with our email server. I don't know if they're typing the wrong address or the contact form isn't working or what, but we do respond. So if you don't hear from us within 24, hour, 24 business hours, if you email us Friday at 5 o'clock, we're not going to answer you until Monday. But 
if you don't receive a response, please email us again. Uh, actually, go to livingonadime.com and click contact and do it through there. Yeah. Uh, we've done a whole bunch of testing after we had a number of people say it wasn't working. We had a bunch of other people send us messages and all of them came through, so we're unclear what's going on. Shelly, yeah. actually, I emailed you earlier from a different email address so that if you happen to, I saw you checked in earlier, so if you're still on, uh, if you email me and tell me the problem you had, it might help a lot of other people. Yeah. So we just switched over to a new website today. No, not today. Thursday. And today, Mike has been working really hard getting everything situated. And so um, if you have issues, please be patient. And just re-email us again, okay? All right, so I'm sprinkling this. The recipe doesn't call for it, but because the world needs more salt, I sprinkle everything with a little bit of seasoned salt, okay? All right, now. Man, it smells really good in here. Okay, so now I'm gonna broil my chicken um, breast for the, this is for tomorrow's night dinner. Now normally I wouldn't do this until the next night, but I'm just showing you the recipe, okay? All right, now. Next, what am I doing next? Oh yes, okay, next, next, next. All this out of the way and I am making the oh yes okay so then you're gonna take for your honey Dijon part honey now these recipes are at livingonadime.com in the description below. Mike's got it. Um, yeah, it's in the description. I keep pasting it in the comments as well. Okay, so. oregano. But they're on the and very garlic top. Garlic powder. They're on the very top at livingonadime.com right now. And or cayenne pepper. Okay, all of those are in there. And I just reshared it again. Okay, so then I'm going to mix all this together, and then we're going to wait and let it uh, broil for just a couple of minutes. And let me wipe up here my mess. Yay. Ellen says the website works much better in my phone. Yes, so we Anna says it looks great. Have actually needed to do our website for like four years now. <laughs> but it was such it was such a huge thing to do that we've just been putting it off, putting it off, and putting it off. Which is our fault. We shouldn't have done that. But, you know, things just keep getting in the way. And so finally we were like, we just have to get this done. And so we did, and um, <laughs> it was we were having trouble with it over the weekend. And Monday it was a big old to do, or Thursday it was a big old to do. Yeah. There's still some things weekend. that aren't right, but they're mostly looking right, so that's good. Yeah. And some things work right right now for. <clears throat> because we can't get the shipping thing quite figured out. Uh, it's currently set oh, to yeah. be flat rate. Yeah, if you guys want a good deal on shipping, if you need to order multiple books, go and order. We have $6 flat rate shipping on all size orders in the United States. So if you need more than one book, that's a good deal on shipping. So go grab it because Mike doesn't have the shipping fixed yet. So... Unfortunately, if you're out of the U.S., it's still really expensive and yeah. it's not flat rate. 
Uh, but for the out of the U.S., we're trying to, once we get the thing set up, it'll be the more accurate price. Yeah. <laughs> okay, still so, gonna, unfortunately, be probably priced let me price. dish up tonight's dinner here so you guys can see exactly what we're having. Okay, so, here's the plate of chicken tenders for tonight, okay? Now, this is way more than we normally would eat for one serving. This is leftovers for lunch tomorrow or the next day, okay? So, let me get... Oh, I probably should go back and see. Okay, and then we're gonna have broccoli. Okay, I'm gonna let these go. This just looks so good. More. Yum. Okay. And then I got some really super good oranges at the store. And then we will cut these up. You can do apples and oranges, you can do oranges by themselves. <laughs> however you want to do it. Wow, Belinda said, just paid my car off. Good job. All right, you go girl. And then, okay, you guys ask what we normally have for dinner. Yum. Okay. So this would be Mike's, Jack's size. Wait, I eat that much? Mike or Dave. Well, this is a little much broccoli. Okay, here, that's a little too much broccoli. There you go. Okay. That's a pretty hefty plate. It looks good though. For Jack, what I would do is give him two oranges, about a little, one or two flowerets, a little bit less broccoli, half the size of potatoes, and one piece of chicken for Jack to start with, okay? Then, if he wants more, I will give him more. All right? So, now, here we go, dear. You ready for taste testing? Yes. Ooh, you could feed me off the knife just like the Renaissance Festival. What's it taste like? <laughs> Is it delish? It's really good. Okay, see. show's over. <laughs> oh, that is good. Mm. Mm. Okay, so. Here is a typical dinner, okay? Which is why we're overweight, I guess. Okay, <laughs> next. Now, got the honey mustard chicken here. Let me flip these. Okay, and then, I'm gonna take the honey mustard sauce Jerry says, Tar is a machine tonight. <laughs> Which is hilarious because I was laying on the couch like an hour and a half ago. <laughs> All right. Got the honey mustard sauce on there. And then we're going to stick it back under the broiler. And get our chicken turned over and finished cooking. Okay, now, then what I have here is some chicken. These are the other two chicken breasts that I have. Yeah. Can you see that? I hope you can oh. see that. Okay, here are the oh, other two chicken breasts that I have. Now, I boiled these uh, until they were tender. I hit the camera instead of the other thingy. It's, oh, that's fine. It's looking, okay. I mean, it just- it, Okay, it so out. I got these until they were tender. So then, <clears throat> um, 
what I do is I will take one and save it for later. Shred it while it's hot. You can do this in the Instant Pot. You can do this in your crock pot. It doesn't have to be in a pan. I'm just showing you. This is how I cook it with a pan. Save the broth and save the second chicken breast for your chicken barley or chicken and rice soup. Okay? Then, what you're going to do is you're going to shred your chicken. Okay? Now, this then is going to be for chicken tacos for all four of us, okay? Now, I will do about this much meat in one taco, and then add beans, lettuce and tomato, sour cream, guacamole if you want, salsa, whatever you want. Then you can serve that with applesauce or canned fruit of any kind, fruit, vegetables, anything you want. So that would be dinner number three is chicken tacos, okay? Then dinner number four, I would take this, would put it back in the pan, boil it, Okay, let me, re, let me re explain that. Normally, I would save the two chicken breasts in the fridge. Then, the day I want to cook it, I would cook both chicken breasts in the pot. Okay? Then, take one chicken breast out, shred and save for tacos, and leave this and make chicken barley soup or chicken and rice soup. Okay? And then I would just shred that and make my soup. And then that would be served with um, crackers or, let's see, what else did I have on here? I had something else. Uh, oh, yeah, cr crackers and then, yeah, fruits and vegetables on the side dipping with ranch. Okay? All right, now let me grab... Oh my goodness, that could have been bad. Okay, so now I have my honey mustard chicken, and let me show you what that looks like, okay? Um, here's my bun. Oops, I forgot the lettuce. Oh well. And then I would probably take this one and cut it in half. Well, let's that. just change. Okay. And then I forgot my lettuce, so let's envision you have lettuce on here. And then I would take my apple, cut up my apple. Okay. And then probably take some baby carrots, throw those on there, and then I would have my dressing, you can make homemade or bought, whatever you want, and then I would have this for another dinner, you can add additional fries or chips or whatever you want but this would be another dinner. Where's my drum roll? Where's my clapping? Thank you. Okay, <laughs> so that is how I do four chicken dinners for $20. Um, super easy, not hard at all. Yum. And there you go. That's how you do it. I don't remember the last time you said that was Thanksgiving a year and a half ago. Uh, so <clears throat> David asked, how did you make the fries? I was late. Did you make those too? Oh, no. Those? These are mm. store-bought waffle fries. Mm. So basically she put them in the oven. <laughs> yeah. 
Guys, I don't make things like my own french fries. Um, let's see, what else don't I make? I don't make my own french fries. I don't make my own pizza pockets. I don't make, what? I'm trying to think of convenience foods. Pizza, I do have pizzas that I keep in the, in the freezer for if Mike and I are going on a date, then I'll throw it in for the boys. Um, for a $3 pizza, you know. A few things like that. It's okay to use convenience items. The problem comes in is when you're using them for, for every single meal. So like I'll keep convenience items like chicken nuggets, pizza pockets, those kinds of things for a quick lunch for Dave or Jack um, when Jack's home. Um, I just buy them on sale and make sure I get the best price that I can. And so, yeah, I don't have a problem with with buying any of those. So, by the way, thank you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> On Friday, Mary sent me a new teapot. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> <laughs> because my other one, which we haven't had the heart to throw away yet, pooped out on us. And we were so incredibly sad because Dave was horrified he might not get his ramen noodles. Dave loves his ramen noodles. <laughs> but anyway, all right. I made soap, for those of you who don't know, on Saturday, and I'm going to cut it while we are taking questions. By the way, if you guys love our videos, would you give me a thumbs up? And would you give me a share, please? I really appreciate it because it really helps us with our channel and our Facebook page. If they see you guys are loving us, they share us more and thank you. I appreciate you sharing these quick and easy chicken recipes for dinner. Yes, yes. Uh, <clears throat> David is asking how many refrigerators do you have? So we have one, one. refrigerator freezer and then we have a, stand, a full <gasps> stand freezer out in the garage. So we have, so I think, I think they were asking because of uh, <clears throat> you buying things to, to save and freeze. Yes, that's what I have. Okay, for you soap makers, look what happened. It got too hot there. So that's very interesting. And the freezer thing worked well for, um, worked well even when we had seven people in the family, right? Oh, yeah. 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 I don't, I know a lot of people keep an old freezer for a second freezer as, um, a backup, but old freezers are really inefficient and it can cost you quite a bit of money to run some of those old ones. Um, guys, Ellie, goatmilkgifts.com. I miss put the link today, but she is having a leap day sale. She extended it through today because she made a mistake and forgot to add to inventory all her soaps she had. What? She had them all down there ready to go, and she totally forgot to put them in inventory in the store. So you can order soap, soap nets. These things are great for exfoliating. And the cream, 29% off through today. Um, yeah. So, and here is unscented soap right there. Mm. I know it's crazy to smell unscented soap, but fresh soap has just a distinct smell that I love. All right. Yes. Any more questions? <clears throat> oh, yes. Yes. Uh, where were we? Betty Lou was asking, uh, do you do you have chicken four straight days? Yeah, we do because doesn't like beef, doesn't like pork, doesn't like fish. I like beef. Beef just doesn't like me. So pork, eh. <laughs> bacon, yeah. yes, maybe a little sausage. Yeah, if I'm still alive and Mike dies, I'm gonna be eating <clears throat> steak every day. Yeah, but that's really a I'm getting older and thing. Not a I don't like beef. Oh, okay. It's, it makes me sick. <laughs> Your colon needs to be freed from its bondage uh, hey, when you hey, need hey, it. Hey, hey. <laughs> <clears throat> Sabrina, I love the hand towel on the oven door. Where'd you get it from? Walmart. Wow. Which I'm not shopping at anymore. 
And somebody else asked her, are those Pioneer Woman plates? Yes. That's a really cute plate. Wow. Yes. And earlier somebody asked, why, why aren't you shopping at Walmart anymore? <laughs> Is it because of the fortress thing? Well, it's, for, it's because of a couple of things. So first of all, in Colorado, they allow dogs in the store with food. That is just nasty. And I'm not talking legitimate service dogs. I have no problem with legitimate service dogs. It's when Fifi is riding in the cart that absolutely makes me mad. I went in one time and there was dog hair all over some towels that I was thinking about buying on the bottom shelf. I was like, forget it, this is crazy. Well, so now you have to show your receipt every time you leave the store. And then what just put me over the edge the other day was there had to have been 50 people in line and they had one checker. And I know they're trying to go to checklists, checker lists. I get all that, they're moving over to that, but I'm sorry. It's ridiculous. People do not check out as fast as checkers, and it was just crazy. So I'm like, you know what? I'm an Amazon and Kroger woman from now on. Yep. So that's why. <clears throat> Actually, I went into one of the Walmarts near here the other day, and I was surprised because they put up all these gates and things, Excuse and it me. feels like a fortress to go yeah. in there now. It's ridiculous so anyway all right so this is just some goat i'm not going back into goat i'm not going back into soap making myself my daughter is doing all the selling out i just had some leftover supplies that i needed to use up because we looked at a house this weekend i looked at a house this weekend oh it was so cute it was so cute but it just wasn't enough property for our needs because we have three books coming and we need a big outbuilding, which it did not have and it did not have the space to put. It was an old school that they had made into a house. Oh my goodness, it would have been perfect. It even had the lady was a gardener, so I wouldn't have had even had to put gardens in. So I'm at the point now where I'm like, you know what? I'm getting everything used up and sold. And um, we have some books. Guys, watch on Facebook tomorrow. I'm going to be putting up some old Dining on a Dimes that we had left over tomorrow on Facebook. So be watching for that post. I only have, I think, 15, 10 or 15 of them. So it's going to be first come, first serve. But a lot of things like that we're going through and I'm getting prepared in case we find our dream home. <gasps> wow. There you go. All right. Questions, comments? <laughs> Sorry, I was thinking about the dream home thing. <clears throat> uh, Terry says the potato crusted chicken is a great idea plus gluten free. Yes. Yes. Uh, Cindy said, how long do you think meat is good for in the freezer? Uh, it's meat that's vacuum sealed from a friend from 2018. Ooh. Yeah, I probably wouldn't need it. I, I, you, if it's vacuum sealed, you could maybe, well, in, in the freezer. okay, I say that, but I have some liver in the freezer that I'm still eating. I got this huge thing of liver from a friend of mine that I'm still eating from 2018 and it's vacuum sealed and it's still good. So it might taste freezer burned. I guess what I would say is cook it up and see if it tastes okay. If it's been in the freezer and it's not defrosted, been defrosted, it's probably fine. But, um, you know, it could get freezer burn. Although vacuum <clears throat> sealing really helps. Does our whole family use the soap? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep, everybody uses it. it. This unscented, my brother and my son both have eczema really bad and we've had um, viewers with psoriasis. I'm not making any medical claims, but I'm just saying this is the one they use and they won't use anything else now. I couldn't get them for like two years. I couldn't get them to use it. I'm like, guys, use my soap. No. Well, one day my son got really bad and desperate and he finally tried and he's like, oh, well, this is really great. 
<laughs> I was like, and his eczema started clearing up. I'm like, dude. But you know how teenagers are. They won't listen. You know, teenagers. Yes. Give them a mile and they will swim all over you. Is that how it is? I don't know. However it is. Close enough. Something like that. Give them a fork and they're... I don't know. What's the saying? <laughs> <clears throat> well, and our, our oldest son, she was saying that he... he uh, uses the soap because of his eczema. She also makes him homemade um, laundry detergent yeah. because he has a reaction to a bunch of stuff yeah. in there. Poor yeah. guy. My poor baby. But anyway. And then this one here is for Mike. See how good you're going to be smelling? Mm. This is just leftovers. Maybe you should be smelling it. <laughs> Whoa. Um, this was just leftover soap, so I threw in some soap shreds that I had that um, is going to be for Mike to use. <laughs> Penny says, gag liver, LOL. I love I'm liver. I'm with you, Penny. I absolutely love liver. That would be a good diet for me because I would never eat it. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, Debbie's asking Ellie's website. It's uh, go, oh, goatmilkgifts.com, yeah. and yep. I'll share the link here. It's also in the description uh, yep. of the show. Goatmilkgifts.com is where you can get the goat milk soap and the goat milk cream, along with the little soap nuts. She's got 29% off for Leap Day through today. Well, through tomorrow. She'll probably do it through tomorrow, I think she said, because the show. some people watch the show later. But... Um, <laughs> She messed up and didn't get her soap into inventory and didn't realize she had a sale and it was saying she didn't have any soap in inventory. So she was like, no! Karen wants to know, <clears throat> Karen wants to know uh, if you're moving away from Walmart as you're talking about houses and moving at the same time. Am I moving away from what? Walmart. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Michelle is asking, what is in your soap? Uh, do we still have that? Um, this, this batch is olive oil Oops. Um, is an olive oil soap with olive oil avocado and um, palm are the three main ingredients and then I have um, coconut oil and uh, castor oil also so yeah and we Can have a thing off okay uh, Taras olive oil Oh yeah, Michael put the link on there. So we had a lot of things happen this weekend. I'm sharing the recipe to Tar's olive oil soap in the comments, and I'll try to get it in the uh, description here shortly. We got the um, new website up, had a huge catastrophe with it. Mike was having a meltdown. He's lucky I'm still married to him. You're um, lucky I'm still married to you! <laughs> The website wasn't even together, and she's like, we're going live. <laughs> Mike, so, you're responsible for fixing it. <laughs> so we had the website go. Then Friday, Ellie and I drove an hour to Denver to go look at a car for her to buy and drove another hour to Fort Collins to look at another car. And in total, we spent four and a half hours looking at two cars, but she found herself a really nice 2012 Mazda with 43,000 miles on it for $4,500. 40, 40, how many thousand? 3,000 miles. 43,000, wow. So she got a super stinking good deal on a car. And then Saturday we went and looked at that house. And we stood there and contemplated how we were going to try and get everything to work on this lot. And it would not. The place had been remodeled in the 70s. Although that architect was brilliant because even though it was a 50-year-old remodel, you would have thought it was remodeled 10 days ago. I mean, it just was beautiful. But the septic tank was 50 years old also. So we would have had to put in a whole new septic, septic tank within the next few years I'm sure and there wasn't any space in the property to put, a put building an outbuilding to store the books and do the business stuff yeah so I really was really sad about that yeah. but so anyway so then I have also not been 
feeling very well. I have had some sort of sickness that is not going away. So in the middle of all that, I have not been doing very well. So it has just been busy, busy, busy. <laughs> Although Dave is working on the new cover for the gluten-free, dairy-free, and the Dining on a Dine 2 cookbooks. And oh my goodness, it looks so good. I'm so excited. I can't wait to show it to you guys, but I can't show it to you yet. I have to wait. I have to wait like a month. But I want to show it to you now, but I can't. But I really want to show it to you now <clears> because it's so cool. <laughs> Jamie saw it. She'll tell you how cool it is. So, so. Um, just for you, Debbie, I'm sharing the link again for Ellie's Goat Milk Gifts website. Goatmilkgifts.com. That's where the soap yep. stuff is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Goatmilkgifts.com. So, anyway, we are frantically... I finally perfected gluten-free, dairy-free... Homemade bread that only costs a dollar fifty and is soft and it tastes even better than the store bread. My assistant Heidi, I had her test it at low altitude because I thought it was the altitude affecting mine and it was. So I had to readjust the recipe then for a high altitude recipe because it is so good. I want to make sure everybody could make this recipe. And my assistant's sons were like, this tastes just like regular bread bomb. And it does. What did Dave it? do? Yeah. What did Dave do? Yeah. He did the um, cover for the new oh, books. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> I looked at that I... and I thought, I'm obviously not a designer. Because <laughs> it looked really good. Yeah. It looked better than it's any cover cool. we've ever had. I can't wait. As a matter of so... fact, I talked to the printer today. Was getting the specifications. We got all the proofreader, proofreaders in. Thank you, Goalie. I'm so sorry. Oh, my goodness. Poor Goalie. And thank you, Andrea. Andrea and Goalie were proofreading for me. Now, as soon as we get the website stabilized, hopefully this week, Mike is going to get on proofreading, and hopefully Dave and I are going to get the pictures done. Let's do it. My goodness. We could have... We could start getting books to the printers in about three weeks, four please, weeks. Please, please. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. And then we'll start pre-orders. So. Yay. Uh, something I was going to say. What was it? Uh, I can't think. Oh, well. Terry says, I just ordered the lavender soap. I'm so into scented soaps, even as display, and they usually lose fragrance so quickly. Can't wait to get these. Oh, yay. Actually, our fragrance, <clears throat> I have some of this that I made, Mike, a year and a half ago, I think. And it still smells really good. And here's the other thing. If the outside doesn't smell um, real fragrant because it dries, wash it and then let it dry and the fragrance will be re- whatever you call it, because it kind of like dries a, a harder layer on the outside that will lose the fragrance, but then the fragrance is still on the inside, and so it smells really good. I have Actually, soap from 10. No, what year did we go to Branson in Kansas? 2009. Nine. 2009, I got some soap, some homemade soap from Branson, and it still smells. So it's what, 11 years old? I just keep it because it's a memory for me. That was when I got excited to start making soap again. Oh, at that particular trip? Yep. Oh. Uh, yeah. Jody asked, did Ellie make the soap that you just cut? No, Tara no. made it. I made this. <clears throat> I miss making soap. Ellie does not make her soap. She does not like making it. Um, we buy it, or she buys it, from another small U.S.-based soap maker. Um, she likes doing all the packaging and shipping and everything she does not like making it so she gets it from another u.s based for all of you who are worried about things right now um u.s based soap maker so you're supporting not only my daughter but you're also supporting probably 10 or 15 other families too right here in the usa yes God bless America, <laughs> land that I love. Da, 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 da. Can you still use the 25% thank you coupon that we received when we got the planner gift set or has it expired? No, I did not put an expiration date on that. 
Although I found out today that over the weekend it was not working, but it is now. Oh, okay. So it may not I have been working, it. but that was part of our website thing. So if you guys have problems with our website, once again, <gasps> please be patient. Email us. If you don't hear from us, if you have an order problem, please re-email us because we have been having some issues. And guys... Oh, and please, if you, if you have any trouble, you're not sure we got it. Go to our website, livingonadime.com, and click the contact. Go through the contact form mm -hmm. because if, if there's a spam filter issue, yeah. that should prevent it from being a problem. And a lot of times, people <clears throat> have, we will respond, but their spam filter is set so high that our email doesn't get through. So a lot of times, we have found that we respond, and then people start getting really huffy and everything, and I'm like, okay, so what do you do? So put your phone number also in there if you get it. That type of thing. We had a couple of people, Dining on Dime Cookbook, um, you know, they said they didn't receive it. It was delivered. They went to charge it back on their credit card, which causes huge issues for us. It's like major issues. And it costs us $20 every time a chargeback happens, which is really frustrating when a product has been delivered and people just aren't paying attention to the tracking information like some will be sitting at a post office waiting for them yeah there's one right now that's sitting at a post office that's been charged back and, and the problem is even a lot of times even when the person tells their bank then they don't, yeah. they don't reverse the it the anyway. banks don't pay us back we <clears> lose <throat> money on that so i don't have a problem if there's an actual legitimate reason to be charged back but the problem is every single time the product has been delivered and really our end of the contract ends as soon as the post office scans it and then it's you're supposed to deal with you in the post office now we will work with you and we work with the post office but you know anyway just that whole explanation because people think it's no big deal to just call their credit card and charge it back and it actually is a big deal for us well also so. eventually if you do that with enough people the credit card will cut you off yeah um, yeah. Kimberly, Ooh. I tried made some hot process with yogurt and coconut milk <clears throat> at the end the other day for the first time and it's still kind of soft. Did I mess up or should I just let it sit and cure longer? So you probably messed up a little bit, but if it seems like it's fine and it's just soft, just let it sit for eight or ten weeks and some of the water will evaporate and you should be perfectly fine. Um, and somebody, that Jessica said, love the goat milk cream. Right here, right here, right here. Use it on my neck. Oh! Use it on my neck, and it's so rich and luxurious. It is, isn't it? Oops. I will share the link to Ellie's luxurious goat milk cream. Which one is this? Oh, that's right now. Yeah, I love the goat milk cream. I use it every night. Aww. I love it, I love it, I love it. Thank you, Michelle. She says, every time I watch your show, I feel blessed. Thank you so Thanks. much. Thanks! Susan, it's... do you know how many cookbooks you have sold? So we... I think we are around 500,000 with ebooks and print books combined, which is over, a, over, a yeah, time. over 20 years. But for self published authors, we're like in the top like 0.0% because usually they consider you a success if you sell 5,000 books. <laughs> I thought it was 500. Uh -uh. Oh, 5,000? 5, yeah, I know. You're considered a really big success. Uh -huh. If you sell 5,000, you considered have done a good job if you sell 500. But yeah. And just for the record, for all of you mathematicians who are trolling us, we don't get paid twenty one ninety five or whatever the twenty nine ninety five for every You don't even know how much it is because you don't get paid. <laughs> Yeah, actually, uh, a lot of that cost is in printing and shipping. Well, not printing. Post and office losses. Shipping to us and post office losses and um, paying two hundred fifty. Yeah, two hundred fifty thousand of those books. We only got a quarter each. Yeah. Because they were through a. Um, they were through books are fun. Yeah. If you know Scholastics and books are fun, our distributors for schools. Um. We only got a quarter each for those, <clears throat> which the new covers are so cool. I'm going to resubmit them again. And did you know Books Are Fun is right here in Broomfield? Uh, but, oh, I did not know that. Yes. 
I wow. think I'm going to walk down there to the office and just... We should negotiate a better deal this time. Well, you better believe I'm going to get a better deal this time. That was 15 years ago, so now yeah. I am going to get a better deal this time. <clears throat> so... Yeah, sometimes I think we've realized, you know, some things are maybe not so worth it. Like, we used to like putting books in libraries, but it's just too much work to deal with the bureaucracy. <laughs> there was a library that's ordering from us now, and we've actually lost money because Had to Mike send tons has of sent emails so many back emails. Because of all the, you know... Bureaucracy. The forms aren't quite right, and it's like, okay, well... <laughs> so, like, yeah, go to our website and buy it. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, so... Actually, Melissa, yes, I did get your email about the Bible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Somebody, at, actually, a couple of people were telling us how much they appreciate it, and one person said, um, I thought maybe I would point, uh, Miss and Mess, we received our Bible last week, and our family's been working our way through John. Oh, yay, you're welcome. So here's the thing on the Bibles, guys. We were giving them away, but Amazon, we ordered so many of them that Amazon said we couldn't anymore. And quite frankly, financially, we really couldn't anymore either. But <laughs> God would provide and we would do it anyway. We'd figure out a way. But here's the thing. Our church plant, well, not plant, our church our leg, church what do you call start, it? Our church started in another campus. And our church after campus, a few years, yeah. deciding to go back to one campus. Yeah. So our second campus of our church is closing down. <clears> and they had a whole bunch of Bibles left from that. And we, They're not the same one, but... Yeah. We are going to get those from them. They're not the same study Bible, but if you want a Bible, we will be happy to send those out as soon as we get them. If you're interested, go to the contact form and email me, and as soon as we get them in the next, probably in the next couple of days, we'll get them. We will be happy to send those out to you Um if you missed out on the Bible and you would like one. This is an English Standard Version one, not a New Living Translation. It's still um, pretty readable, though. It's still pretty readable, yeah. Yeah. Um, people were talking about Ellie in the car, and they were saying, where was it? Uh, they were talking about how great a job she did in, in getting that, and I was going to make comment on that. Where was it, the comment about the car? Um... And I'll tell you while he's looking oh, for yeah. that... Oh, go ahead. Well, Tyra said congratulations to Ellie on the Mazda, but other people were saying that too. But what I wanted to say about that, this is a like a real life a real life example where you can kind of see the process. She only started looking like a week or two, two ago. Two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. We figured she spent 18 hours mm -hmm. looking online. You think that many? She Yeah, I asked her. Oh, okay. But think about it. She spent 18 hours looking online over two weeks. She saved $10,000 on this car. Yeah. So is 18 hours worth of work worth $10,000? And how many cars? Yeah. She looked at a lot of them on Facebook Marketplace. Is that where? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, how many did she actually go look at in person? Two. Wow. So one thing, though, that I would say that as a result of this, because we were trying to, we always like to teach the kids in real time sort of how to do life in certain ways. And so when there's some kind of issue that might be a problem, we kind of like to walk through that with them if we can. And so her on the car... Uh, she got an email at one point about a vehicle, and it was just a ridiculously crazy low price on a vehicle, and she just totally fell in love with it and talked as if she already had it. And uh, it was, if you look on Facebook or uh, Craigslist or something like that, sometimes they're scams, and we recognized pretty quick that that was probably a scam. Yeah. And uh, so she she did have a uh, one or two email exchange back and forth, and then she realized it's definitely a scam, and uh, so she re ended up reporting that. But as long as you just kind of keep an eye out and you're cautious, mm -hmm. and like when we go to visit, like we we didn't send her alone to go see the car. No, either. her and I went together. Never go alone to look at a car. Yeah. Or if, you, if you're a single woman and you have no one else to go with you, go to some place like the front of a Walmart parking lot, or a grocery store parking lot, some public place where there's lots of people to look at the vehicle. Don't ever go by yourself. Um, and yeah, so, and somebody asked, why are we moving? So we've been looking for three years for a new place, but now we're kind of getting to the desperate. This is where God's going to perform a miracle situation. <laughs> like the Andover house. Like the Andover house, pretty... yeah. 
this is where God's going to perform a miracle because we're at the point now where we have three books that we're going to be ordering. Oh, thanks, Danny. Thanks, Danny. Danny, super chat, six dollars. Uh, Thank you for all your tips and advice. We so appreciate much. that. So we're at the point now. We have three books after our Mother's Day sale. We're having we have a big Mother's. We always have a big Mother's Day sale. After our Mother's Day sale, we will be out of our current edition of books. We will be out of these books. So it just kind of lined up. Everybody's loving your soap, Belly. Ooh, she, clean hands. Huh? <laughs> clean hands. Clean hands. Yeet. See, now you need to push. Are you afraid of the coronavirus? <laughs> Wash your hands with goat milk cream and they won't, or goat milk soap and they won't dry out. That's very aggressive, Mom. That's very, <laughs> That's very aggressive. aggressive. And everybody's saying good job and congrats on your car. Ah, oh, thank you. Yes, <laughs> I'm very excited about it. She's very excited. Mm -hmm. uh, but here's the thing. It's the timing is ending up that we're going to have three books coming out approximately the same time. Okay. That's great. Except that each batch of books is five pallets of books. <clears throat> so that's 15 pallets of books. That's if we get a small batch. If we get a small batch. <laughs> Our garage holds 10 pallets of books. So we have kind of an interesting situation here that we quite frankly are not sure how we're going to deal with it. One way we might be able to deal with it is all the books arrive. We get as many in the garage as we can, set the rest on our driveway and print all the labels like a day or two before they arrive and just slap the labels on and get them down to the post office. That's one option. Option number two, which we have done before and we don't really like doing, we can hand carry every single case of books into the house and back down to the basement <laughs> and store them in the basement if we don't find a house. Although I was thinking today, the absolute perfect time for us to move would be if we got the books to the printer <laughs> that three months In between, between getting the books to the printer and when they arrive. I don't know. We'll see. But unfortunately, because Colorado is so ridiculously expensive for houses now, we um, are looking, if we just find a really super good deal, we'll go ahead and get a small loan to pay the extra that we would need to get the two or three acres of land that we need. But, um, you know, we just became debt free <clears throat> and we really don't want to get another mortgage at all. But, you know, we might do that. Basically, it's funny because the business has slowly been taking over the house. Yeah. I mean, we've had books in the living room because I can't ship books when they're cold. So the kids bring them in and set them in the living room and then Ellie packages them up for me. And then I slap the labels on. But if they're cold, the labels don't stick to the books, to the boxes. So for four months now, we've had books in the living room. I'd really, I would just love it. I would love, love, love it if we could just get a separate warehouse studio to put all the business in. But the problem is we probably need at least realistically, we really need three to 5,000 square foot building, which is huge. It seems huge, but we have six books planned on coming out three coming out in about four months. And then I have three more that are in the works right now that we're working on writing. So if we have six books, six books, if we have six books, how many pallets is that? Six times five, that's 30 pallets of books. Well, this last, this last time we got, how many pallets was that all together? It was a lot more. No. Because the boxes. Yeah, it was eight pallets. It was eight pallets No, it was time. like at least 10. Because five fits on the one side. One, two, three. Four, five, oh yeah, it was 10 pallets. Yeah, it was 10 pallets. Yeah, because the printer prepackaged the books <clears throat> into boxes for us. It was 10 pallets this last time. And that actually was really helpful. So do your calculator thing. How many, if you do four times four is 16, how much is 16 times, times 30? 
16 times 30. That can't be right. 16 times 30. Oh, wait, wait, 30. Well, 30. So if we have, if we have, if we have 30 four by four pallets. Oh, yeah. How many square feet would we need for a, sh for a garage? See, I think you're overestimating a little bit. Oh, that can't be right. Did I totally miscalculate that? Well, three times 16 is 48. So 30 times 16 would be 480. There's no way 480 square feet. If you say our garage out there is 1,200 square feet and we only have 10 pallets of books. Well, yeah, but we have other stuff in between them, like the shipping I know, but, desk and the freezer. And... Yeah, but if we didn't have all that stuff, we might get 15 in there. No, I think we could get 15 in there the way it is. Okay, so even if we got 15 in there at 1,200 square feet, yeah. that's still 3,000 square feet. We could do the math and measure and figure out how much we think we need. So we need at least 3,000 square feet, but that doesn't include if we put the studio. So I don't know. All right. Uh, Diana, hi, Tara and Mike. Enjoy your show. Thank you. Aww, We're glad thanks. you're here. Rita wants to know, where's Jack? See, somebody's keeping her eyes open. Uh, he's at his <clears throat> robotics club for school, so... Yeah. Yes. Uh, oh, uh, there was somebody that I was telling you when we were talking about the Bibles earlier. Somebody had mentioned um, that her she got one hoping that... She said, Kathleen, meaning thank you guys for my beautiful Bible. My hope was that in the simpler text, my husband would be more open to reading it with me. It worked. We yeah. Love it. Thank you so much. Yeah, if you've only read a King James Bible before, please try a New Living <clears throat> Translation. It is a very good translation. It's very easy to read. It's in a language that you can understand now. There will be people that tell you that the King James Version is the only real version of the Bible. That is not true. I'm sorry, that is a lie straight from the pit of hell. No offense to anyone who believes that, but it's that's just what it is. So, try a New Living Translation Bible because they work really well. We have a link if you go to our Amazon store. It is in there. So, um, okay, let's see. How long do hard boiled eggs last? About seven days. Uh, yes, we pray, 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 pray. Every time we have a load of books, we pray every time that it's not snowing or raining. And so far, God has been good. If not, I don't know, I guess we'd stretch a tarp or something to go between the truck and the house because I don't know what we would do. We'd figure something out. We'd well, figure it's funny because the last time we got books, they told us, you really need a, a dock. A loading like, dock. A dock. I was thinking, well, I guess if we were out, if we had a, a little bit of acreage out in somewhere, we could do get, a loading dock with a ramp on the inside. We could bring a front loader and scoop down and make ourselves a dock. But... Yeah. Alrighty, so... Yeah. Yeah. Alright, guys, please like, subscribe, and share. Please check out our Dining on a Dime cookbook. $6 flat shipping right now. If you need more than one book, this is a great <clears throat> savings on shipping for you if you need more than one book right now. Um, we also have Ellie's Soap and Goat Milk Cream, GoatMilkGifts.com. She's having her 29% off for leap year that she extended because she made the mistake of listing her soap as not listed. So you can still get that 29% off. I think it's the best deal. Um, yes, you can use the shipping with the coupon code too. If you have a coupon code from ordering previously, you may, um, you may order um, we send out, well, here, I'll just tell everybody. We send out a coupon code with every order, but if you really want to order right now, just use coupon code THANK YOU, and you'll get 25% off and $6 shipping. That's totally fine. Um, we're having major issues, so I'm just doing that as a thank you for being patient with our website and patient with things that are going on. Wednesday show, it's going to be a Mike and Dave show. Whoa. I have a doctor's appointment. Uh, somebody was, I didn't see who was asking about shipping to UK. Right now the shipping out of the US isn't, um, <laughs> it's set up for a pretty high amount. 
which it's may, eighty seven dollars. It may not actually be quite as high as that, no. but it's pretty high. Unfortunately, the because of the post office. Although the new thing might have a bigger discount than our old. Maybe. The shipping right now to the UK is about $45 just for the shipping. If you order from the UK or Canada or anywhere else outside the US, I will give you a refund for the excess shipping if there is excess shipping, okay? So um, Canada, I think right now is $35 and I think the UK and Australia, all that is $45, but you can use coupon code thank you for 25% off. In the US, it's $6 flat rate shipping right now. So if you need more than one book, it's a good deal. That's what happens when you have major mess ups. You know, businesses offer you good deals as a suck up gift to say, please still love us. Yes. Do you think they'll still love us? <laughs> Probably. I hope so. And for those of you out of the U.S., it's it's unfortunate. We really don't like the fact that the yeah. shipping is that much, but that's how much the post office charges yeah. us. Yeah. So We're working on some things to try and fix that, but at the moment, there's just nothing uh, that we can get around for that. All right. Please like, subscribe, and share business livingonadime.com. Mike and Dave will see you on Wednesday. Bye. Mike is waiting.